Hey there gardening friends, I'm Angela. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. Today I'm out here trying to get a jump start before the heat kicks in. We are supposed to be reaching 94 today Fahrenheit, 34 Celsius. So let's get it done before that heat rolls in. Today's morning task primarily you're just going to be watering uh, we had a good solid rain a couple of days ago, but with yesterday's extreme heat and today's predicted extreme heat, I think I'm just going to give my plants a little extra water this morning. And other than that, it'll be just checking things the usual, making sure that everything looks good, checking for pests, anything like that. And I did want to show you guys... Um, this one small bed on the side of our house that I normally don't focus on too much here on the channel. So let's look at that first. So this is a little retaining wall we built here on <clears throat> one side of our house. And I know I've shown this before, but not too frequently. This primarily has perennials and shrubs in it. But last year, I think it was just last year, I did start adding some edibles to try to, in my attempt to do edible landscaping. So I've got a potentilla shrub there, spirea shrub right there, a couple of perennials, that's dianthus, that one is gara, and this tall one in the back is my joe pie weed. And if you'll notice here, I have a little pepper plant. I wonder what's going on with that leaf. And I have some sedums that had taken a hit to the deer for the second year in a row. I've started spraying uh, the perimeter of this like right along the edge there with liquid fence, trying to keep it out of the bed just because there are edibles in it, even though I believe that liquid fence is not supposed to be toxic. I still don't like putting a lot of chemicals next to my food. And there's another pepper plant and there is another. So right now, as far as edibles, oh, there's my lavender I started from seed, I think just last year, no, probably two years ago. No, maybe last year. But anyway, this is the first year that it's flowered. Not sure if that's showing up. There we go. Yeah, that'll do nicely once it fills out. I do have some sorrel here, which is edible, but I'm just primarily at this point growing it because it's so beautiful and this did come back from last year. And then over here I have a cabbage and some cilantro that I need to prune. And the last thing I want to show you guys over here are my three blueberry plants. I got this one here, the one tucked on the ground in the back there, and then one up on our small deck right there. There are three different varieties. I can cover that with you. This one in front here is a Chippewa. I don't have these memorized yet, so I'm going to have to take a little peek at the tags. This one is Duke. And let's walk up these steps and take a look at this one. Elliot. This one's Elliot. We went ahead and moved this one up here because it had the most blueberries forming on it and I really am worried about predators. I feel like it's a little bit safer up here although I know that the birds and the squirrels can still get to it. So we'll see how that goes. Battling the wildlife is always a challenge and my approach generally is to try to prevent rather than try to fix the damage although we know that that's not always possible either. So we'll see how it goes. This is my first year trying blueberries and I do eventually want to get them planted in the ground, but I'm just not sure of the best location. I wanted to see how they do. I did bump them up from their store, uh, store containers, the ones that they came in, into these bigger, uh, it's probably like a three gallon bucket there uh, with drainage holes, of course. And so I wanted to see how they do in the pots and maybe what the requirements are going to be before choosing a location to get those into the ground. But I'm so excited to have fresh blueberries this year. 
So I am going to come back and water that bed, but for right now I'm going to go ahead and head over to the big garden just to see how things look over there. And I'll go ahead and start watering over there just because it's going to take the longest. We do have irrigation uh, tubing that we just have not set up this year yet. Eventually I'd like to get something running underground so I don't have to, you know, deal with that every single year. So let's see if there's anything new here. And after that, I will probably sign off and get to watering. And I am seeing that the ground is still actually pretty squishy in some places. So I might really not need to do any watering. We got severe rains two days ago or the day, be you know, the day before yesterday. So not quite 48 hours ago. And it looks like the beds are still, the soil is still pretty wet. So. The only thing that I am going to water over here are the plants inside the greenhouse because unfortunately they don't have access to all that good rain. One new thing I saw yesterday was one of my eggplants has a flower on it, so that's promising. So it's a little hard to see, but my cabbages are all under here and it's uh they're looking pretty good overall and it's really exciting to finally be able to successfully grow cabbages last year i harvested three cabbages so this year it's looking like i'm gonna get quite a few more than that maybe i haven't counted and a few of the plants didn't make it but it's looking like between eight and ten this year so that's that's promising and I don't really see too much that's changed that drastically since my last video as far as vegetables being ready to harvest or new things popping up seed wise. So I'll probably go ahead and sign off now. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy gardening to you. Bye.